What's up, Canes fans, and welcome into this special edition of the Canes Insight Podcast. Breaking news out of Coral Gables this afternoon as baseball coach Gino DeMare has resigned from his position. This news first reported by Canes Insight, just like the old days. Uh, some things never change, right? But I have my good friend Javi Salas coming on the podcast uh, just after this to talk about the news. Javi played under Gino, not as head coach, but he knows uh, him well and understands uh, a lot of things that go on behind the scenes at the University of Miami. And of course, this podcast brought to you by Sala Astorita and Cox LLC, which is a boutique law firm which offers its clients in-depth experience in the areas of securities enforcement, white collar crime, securities regulation, securities arbitration, and securities litigation. Their attorneys provide clients with specific skills and unique experience, and we are committed to providing our clients with the quality, service, and individualized attention. Sala Astorita and Cox LLC. So once again, going to be joined now by Javi Salas. Going to be talking about huge news out of Miami this afternoon. Gino Damare has stepped down. This is going to be a highly coveted position in the college baseball world. And remember, guys, canesinsight.com. Check out the forums, like, and subscribe on YouTube and all platforms you find us on for your podcasts. Check out the Canes Insight shop, Shopify. And we are next with Javi Salas. Huge news out of Coral Gables this afternoon. And I am joined by Javi Salas on the Canes Insight podcast to talk about Gino Damare's resignation from Miami. Last time we had Javi on the show, we were talking about the regionals in Miami. Things did not go as planned there for the Canes. And now some pretty shocking news this afternoon. Javi, instant reaction on uh, what we're hearing here. I I mean, I'm shocked, Pete, honestly. Um, You know, you mentioned a a week ago, we're talking about preparations for the Coral Gables Regional. Um, Obviously, uh, you know, we're riding high, great performance in the ACC tournament. Uh, Things were were looking up and, and, you know, the the news the last half hour, 45 minutes just absolutely sent shockwaves. I think, first of all, in the local community, former players, uh, you know, been texting back and forth with a lot of guys. And nationally, right? I mean, this catapults itself to the number one job in, in college baseball pretty instantly. Um, you know, in terms of resources, in terms of prestige, in terms of you know history, this is obviously one of the premier programs in college baseball. And um, we're not looking for a head man. It's it's a situation that this program hasn't been in a very very long time, Pete. Um, you you really can't think of any time where the baseball programs had any sort of turnover and. You know, from from the perspective of Gino, I've always been a huge fan of Gino's. Um, he never coached me as a, as a head coach, but he was an assistant in my last two years there, and I have a ton of respect for him, a ton of respect for his family. He's been great to my family. Um, I know his wife, his all his kids very well. Um, he's certainly going to be missed. I mean, he's he's an institution down here in South Florida, obviously, and um, just absolutely shocked, man. Yeah, no, and and you said it. The Demari family has done obviously a ton for the University of Miami, and. Gino was, he was very gracious in his uh, exit quotes, You're talking about how he's, he's always going to be supportive of the program and still plans to, you know, help however he can, obviously. So I think, and you're seeing it a little bit on social media already, there's kind of a sentiment of, well, look, maybe he just, you know, feels like, like right now he's not the best man for the job and, gonna go let someone else uh have their go at it right he's been here for what 24 seasons i believe made the tournament in the four years uh, you know as him as with him as head coach not that that's a huge accomplishment at miami but it's not like the team's coming off a, a dud of a year you just failed to have that postseason run that you were really looking for with him yeah yeah pete i mean look to 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 put it quite simply, the, the expectations, you know, with the football program, with the baseball program, there, there's national championship banners in those stadiums, right? So um, the fans, the community, uh, they, they want to see us in Omaha. And, and look, Gino had some tremendous teams. I think that his best team was cut short by that that COVID year. We, you know, who, who knows what happens with, with that team, with, with that three-headed monster of a pitching staff. But 
look, this is not this is not a rebuild. This is not a program that's down in the dumps. You look across college baseball and you look at the availability of jobs. You're looking at teams that are in the bottom of their conferences, their respective conferences. I mean, Miami finished fourth in the ACC this year. Uh, you know, they hosted a regional. They were the number nine national seed, and they're looking for a new head man. So it's it's an absolute tremendous job. I mean, look, there's not many times you're going to say in your career that this might be the premier job across all of college baseball, but it is. It, it absolutely is. Um, you know, this, this is a program that has seen a ton of continuity from between, you know, Coach Frazier, an institution. There's a statue outside the building for him. Coach Morris, his number's retired in the outfield. I'm sure there'll be a statue for him. And Gino, you know, the last five years, who's provided a ton of, of you know, confidence. He's kept that program. Not, not many head coaches can say that they followed a legend and, you know, seamlessly transitioned. Um, Gino came in right away with some really high power recruiting classes. You mentioned he's hosted a couple of regionals, did very well in, the, in one of the top, top conferences in college baseball. So this was not a job that, that, you know, Gino was ousted. This was obviously he made the decision on his own terms. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. And you sort of alluded to it, but the standard has been elevated at, at the University of Miami yeah. right now in terms of the athletic side of things, which for the longest time, Canes fans have wanted that standard to be raised and for there to be people held accountable, right? Yeah. So I, speculatively, speculatively, excuse me, you just have to wonder, right, um, Dan Radakovich coming in from Clemson, right? We've seen his impact early on at Miami and the success of the, you know, it, a lot of that stuff, it's hard to say it's directly because he's the athletic director and the stuff that he's doing, but he's a guy who you'd expect to ask the tough questions, right, yeah. of the yeah. people in charge at Miami. I don't know if that was necessarily happening with the Blake Jameses of the world. Um, and again, with Radakovich, it's coming with a little bit more credibility, right? Sure. So to me, it's, oh, the, the big picture thing when you're looking at the athletic program at, at Miami, it's going to be very interesting to see where this coaching search goes. You saw how they handled it with the Mario Cristobal sweepstakes. We'll see how things end up turning out there. But they went and got the most hot, you know, the hottest name on the market yeah. that ended up getting paid a whole lot more money than you would have expected yeah. the University of Miami to be able to, to pay. And you would expect them to have the resources to go out now and I'm not going to say get whoever they want as, as coach, but you're going to have a lot of interested people out there. No, definitely. And I, I can, I can assure you that Dan Radakovich's phone is probably ringing off the hook with, with agents and prospective head coaches. I mean, shoot, Pete, if, if I was a head coach and I may call Radakovich myself right now, if, if I, <laughs> if I had the opportunity and any sort of resume to, to be a head coach, but look, I, I mentioned earlier, this is now the premier job in college baseball. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, and it's, it's a crazy time in college sports because the transfer portal is flush with with players you know recruiting classes has never been hotter uh, miami's pulled in you know a top 10 class the last three or four years under gino so the talent is there the pipeline is there you're in south florida you have to imagine with the new change of guard with the athletic department resources are no longer an issue um you know i think there's there's some some plans in place for for the elevation of, of the baseball program in, in terms of facilities so we have the indoor facility the locker room's on its way the scoreboard's beautiful the field looked great this past weekend. I mean, look, this this is going to be a national search, and and I envision that Dan Radakovich is going to kick the tires on some of the biggest names in college baseball. And and you know, I think what's a little different here, P two, is Miami has this brotherhood aspect, right? I think we saw it in football. A lot of the former players are really involved. Baseball is the same way. Um, I would imagine Dan Radakovich is going to make some calls as you know some former big leaguers that played at Miami. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets input from the Alex Coras, the Andre Alonzos of the world, the Ryan Bronze, um, and, and some of the former players that played on national championship teams in 99, 2001. Um, you know, th those are the guys that, that Radakovich needs to be calling, getting some input from. Um, and at the end of the day, I think he's going to have a long list of really qualified candidates that want this job and are going to be very, very qualified to take over this program. So we don't have we don't have an idea of any names or anything like that yet. I'm sure over the next few days, as you said, that it's going to be a very hot uh, market for that. But listen, you said you don't have the resume for it, but I'll I'll flip it to you and I'll give you a chance 
let's say you were interviewing right for the head coaching position what would your plan be you know uh, we we say that joking around but if in in today's landscape the way that you're talking about how do you win at the highest level at university of miami right now we understand the the issues and the limitations with the scholarships in baseball yeah. right and you've discussed this at length multiple times on the podcast how hard it is with miami being you know a private institution but what's the blueprint to win here we see guys it's it's kind of like football right you see guys all scatter all over the country and end up becoming really good players other parts uh, you know of the country is it as simple as just recruiting the right guys and developing or what is the way to get Miami back to the top when it comes to baseball? Yeah, I, that's a great question. And I think it's something that, you know, you, you, we could talk about for the next couple hours here, trying to figure out what the best plan of, you know, attack is. But I think the reality is Pete, this, this program's not far away, right? You, you, you think about where, where we're standing right now. We're a number nine national seed a week ago. You're hosting a regional. You have the ability to play in front of your home fans. So this is not this is not a place that that necessarily rebuilds. the The, the program can recruit itself. Uh, you have to think that over the next you know days, weeks, whatever it is, there's going to be a lot of interest in, in players wanting to come play for Miami, and that, that's just always been it's been the nature of the beast. So I think you know from from my perspective, it's it's getting back to 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 what Miami really is at its core, and that's you know involving the entire community, which which we do we have a tremendous fan base. You saw it this week. There's a two and a half hour rain delay, and it's still a packed house. Like there's still a huge appetite for Canes baseball down here. We have such a rich alumni base. Um, you know, there's there's just so much going in the right direction. Um, I, I think baseball's changed though, man. It's 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 crazy. We we talked to some guys that that are former teammates of ours and you know are high, higher ups in, in some of the major league organizations. And and data and analytics is is the future, right? I mean, I think we've seen it across across major league baseball. It's trickling its way down to college baseball. There's some programs that have more robust programs than others, but Look, you, you gotta you gotta involve you know the community. You gotta involve the right players. You gotta build the culture, and you gotta sprinkle in a little bit of uh, the computer science and, and make sure that you're building the program in the right direction. And look, I I I'm proud to be a Hurricane. I bleed orange and green. I will be a fan till whoever whoever comes in and takes this job. I will support them 100. I, I I love Coach Morris. I love Gino, the coaching staff in place. They've they've all carried the torch. This is just a really uncharted territory for this program. Um, and I think the next week, week and a half, two weeks are going to be some of the most interesting times to, to be a hurricane fan and, and follow this, this coaching search. Yeah. I don't want to get too into the weeds there, but what you, you mentioned the analytics part, and that's something that from my understanding was not a, a focal point of the, the program, right? They've brought some people in over the last few years to try to bolster it, but Again, having people who are doing the analytics and actually implementing what you're understanding, understanding and seeing from the numbers are two different things uh, completely. So it should be it should be interesting not just to see how who, who the coach is, but how they build the staff out yeah. and see what sort of different things they bring to the table. That again, you Gino came from the Morris tree. Right. Yep. So you, you, you understand that a lot of the stuff that he learned was from the previous regime. Right. So yeah. it's going to be a new time at Miami and it's going to be exciting if you're a Canes baseball fan, because some people would say they've been kind of stuck in the dark ages. So yeah. uh, the, the evolution is going to be interesting to watch. Hav, appreciate you joining uh, us once again. It's from one week to the next, pretty, pretty crazy. The news that that came out, but I'm sure that in the next few weeks here, we'll have another reaction podcast to the hire and hopefully it's a good one for the Canes. Yeah, absolutely, Pete. And and look, I think if there's one thing I can echo to to Canes fans all over is that baseball's tough, man. The, the last week obviously was very difficult. Um, you host a regional. No one no one wanted that result. Um, you know, it's a tough in a four game stretch to really define your season, but that's the reality of, of college baseball, the regional, the super regional Omaha that, you know, can be the, the, the deciding factor in, in how you remember a baseball club. And the, the first 56 games went about as good as they can go for the Hurricanes. And then it was tough. It's a tough way to end. Trust me, I've been on, on, on the short end of the stick four times in my years in, in regionals, never made it to a super. So 
I know better than anybody how hard it is, how hard teams work, um, the hours the coaching staff puts in to get those guys ready. So, look, I think you got to tip your hat to Gino. Um, if this is the end of, of his coaching career as a whole, it, it really was remarkable. Um, what him and his family have done for this program is is something that you can never put truly into words. Um, you know, his father was a stalwart and, and was a tremendous proponent of the baseball program for a very long time. So um, I, I thank Gino personally. I thank his family for, like I said, for how good they were to me and my family. Um, but yeah, the next couple of weeks, Pete, we'll, we'll see how this goes, man. You know better than anybody. These coaches searches are, it's an exciting time. You're going to hear yeah. a lot of names, a lot of rumors, but look, well, the, the bottom line is this program is, has a rich tradition. It's a prestigious program. And all in all, man, the Canes move the needle, whether, whether yeah. it's in, you know, on the field, off the field, these coaching searches, you look at, you look at Twitter, it's been, it's been nonstop since the news came out. So yeah, it'll be in a very, very interesting time the next couple of weeks. And you said it best, best of luck to Gino and, and his family. Listen, the, the college coaching world, it's, it's a whole lot of scumbags out there. You could say what you want about a coach's abilities, you know, coaching wise, but you, I never heard anything about Gino's character and you hear stories about guys doing players wrong and stuff like that. I'm sure there's stuff out there, right? Someone's going to listen to this and say, oh, well, I, yeah. I know about this that happened. But again, overwhelmingly, it, it, he, you got you hear a lot of positive stuff about him. So best of luck to Gino moving on. Hav, thank you once again, and uh, we'll be in touch. We'll uh, we'll see what happens soon. All right, Pete, go Canes.